Joining me here now is the star of Air, um, and you can catch it in theaters on Wednesday, April the 5th. He is the man who plays Sonny Vaccaro, who closes the deal in Air. Spoiler alert, they get Jordan. Matt Damon joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show. Good to see you, Matt. Good to see you, Rich. Um, it's an incredible movie. Congratulations. It's really special, brother. Thanks. Congrats. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, we're really happy with it. Um, it kind of fell in our laps. Um, Less than a year ago, actually, I think we called Amazon about it in early April and we were shooting it by June um, and, you know, it was finished, uh, you know, by the end of the by the end of the year. And we've just been kind of waiting to to roll out with it. So so we it, it was just it's such a great story, you know, and it's kind of our vintage um you know, we, I mean, I, I just remember, you know, Jordan and what that meant to everybody. And, and, uh, and, and it's, so there's all this stuff about this story that I didn't know that I thought that I found really interesting. And it's just one of those scripts that you read every time I read it, I would, I would be like, oh, shit, I'm here for an hour and a half now. Cause I'm not going to put this down. I just go right. through the whole thing. because It really is a fun story. Well, the movie felt like it lasted five minutes. I mean, that's, that's how, that's how I felt. And then also, you know, the sign of a good, I don't know if you want to call it a sports movie, but a sign of a good sports movie um, is where you clearly know the ending and you're still on the edge of your seat. I like, I, yeah. I know, as I said at the top, spoiler alert, they, they signed Jordan. Yeah. I, I knew, I knew this was going to happen, but I was on the edge of my seat about how it was going to happen. I really love that. Yeah, yeah. It, I think, you know, it's just the script, it was really, did a really good job of, of you know, that's what I mean about not being able to put it down. It really was a gripping, a gripping story. And sometimes movies can do that. You know, we all know the boat sinks in Titanic, but <laughs> um, we all, we all sat all the way through that one too, you know. Well, um, I, think I was going to go, I was going to go like, we, we we knew they win the miracle on ice in miracle. You know, I was, I was going to, sure. you know what I mean? But I was on the edge of my seat to see how that was actually going to play out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and look, I mean, I, that was the, you know, the other side to this was Ben went down and sat with MJ um, <clears throat> because we really needed his blessing. Like if he said, look, guys, don't touch this, please. We, we wouldn't have done the movie. I mean, there, you know, um, and, uh, but, but, his the, the 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 direction that he gave us which is kind of amazing kind of coming out of that meeting was were a few things he said George Raveling was the first person he heard about Nike uh from and was in his ear about it and Howard White um who and and neither of those characters were in the script that we read huh. um and and then the final thing that he said was um he talked really you know, Ben was really moved by the way he talked about his mother and um, and how what an impact and what a powerful force she was in his life. And and through this time and, and uh, you know, what a heady thing to be 21 years old and trying to negotiate. I mean, it's just, imagine, you know, imagine what a lot of these athletes have to contend with. They're making these really consequential decisions about the rest of their lives. And, and Michael said to Ben at one point, you know, I, hey, he goes, I, I would have done the whole thing for the car. You know, because in the in the in the movie, there's this thing he wants a red Mercedes, and and his mother just knows better. She goes like, I, "I'll make a deal for the Mercedes. It's going to be forgotten next year." You know, but what we need is this. You know, and it, and it, so it just becomes this incredible story about his mother, and 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 it was in that meeting that Ben asked him, you know, who, sh you know, if if I could, you know, if you could choose who to play your mother, and before he finished the sentence. Michael said Viola Davis he did. so Ben called me he goes yeah so Michael really gave us not Ben came out of that meeting going okay I got great news and I got bad news I go okay well give me the great news he goes I know exactly what the movie is and and what to do uh he goes I'm gonna call Chris Tucker because we wanted to work with Chris forever okay um and and Chris is going we're gonna bring him on Chris is also a great writer so he can help us build this character um, and then, and he goes, I said, what's the bad news? He said, we got to get Viola Davis or we can't make the movie. And I was like, you got to get Viola Davis, dude. That's like saying you want Michael Jordan on your basketball team. You know what I mean? Like she's an American treasure. Um, but, uh, but we, so that was really, we, we spent about a month, I guess, just rewriting and, and working on the screenplay and really trying to, you know, we had done that before with Goodwill Hunting. We, we really wrote a part that we knew we couldn't get the movie made without a movie star. And so that, that Robin Williams part, we used to call it the Harvey Keitel part because in Reservoir Dogs, 
we had heard very famously that that movie got made because Harvey Keitel said yes. Mm -hmm. And so we said, we, we need a Harvey Keitel part because we need somebody to get this movie green lit because they're not going to do it for us. Um, and so we, it kind of was back to the drawing board for us. Like, all right, we got to we got to make a character that's worthy of, you know, our our country's best actress. Um, and so uh, so so that was what we we kind of set about doing. And thankfully, she said yes. And she's obviously incredible in the movie. So did did Ben or did you tell her you were the handpicked choice of Michael Jordan to play his mother? Was she aware? I of think that? Ben told her that. She says she doesn't remember that because I, I think she she blocked it out. She said it was too much responsibility. <laughs> yeah that's viola um, davis too much response that is amazing i know it's like she's so brilliant in the movie too and and uh she's just great and just great to work with and um you know and actually we had this wonderful thing which was um her husband julius Tennant, is a great actor and mm -hmm. you know they're big heavy you know they they produce the woman king together they're they're kind of you know they're hollywood heavy hitters you know they're royalty um but ben cast julius as james as um Dolores's husband, Michael's father, James, and and uh, and he said he said you're not going to believe this. He goes, not only is Julius the best actor for the part, he goes, he goes because they're married. No matter what, no matter what they show up with that day, it's going to be right. He's like if they're in the middle of a fight, if they're in the you know what I mean. It's like if he didn't take the trash out that morning, you know what I mean. It's like yeah. it's going to be. There's so much, and they're able to to just you feel them as a couple in the movie. It's really pretty great. You know, and it's pretty cool, Matt, too, that um, you see this movie and it's it's kind of perfectly timed. I know I'm I'm changing sports here, but the whole conversation about Lamar Jackson right now is that his mother is his agent. And the way it's portrayed, you know, in the sports media, it, it's kind of like, you know, uh, Will Ferrell in the basement screaming for the meatloaf, you know, in, uh, <laughs> in Wedding Crashers. Right, but you, right. you see here, though, that michael's mother makes one of the most key sports decisions in this film or sports business decisions in this film of you know the latter part of the 20th century and i don't think i'm yeah. i'm overstating it I, right here. i don't think you can overstate it you know and and she understood what her son's value was and 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 look i mean i think it's a it's a very unsung role in a lot of these athletes lives are the mothers in fact the original ending of the movie Ben had over the credits, you know, there, I don't want to give too much away. There is, yeah. you know, you, you see MJ, uh, you know, and all his brilliance in the, towards the end of the movie and all the footage that we've all seen. Uh, but you see a speech of his over the credits. Um, but Ben had originally there, he had found when he were researching so many speeches of these athletes when they're given an award, they they start to talk about their mothers oh, and it was one after another you know the famous one with kevin durant right. wayne wade all these amazing athletes who really really kind of uh you know they put their mother in the central you know narrative of 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 their lives because they say this is this is why i am here i would never have been here without her and so so I'm glad the movie is a, you know, it, it, it's a, it, it, uh, I think it pays homage to, to that central role in, 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 in a lot of people's lives, a lot of athletes lives. Did you always think you were playing Sonny Vaccaro in this, when you were reading the script? Did you always think that I, you were doing I, that? You know, Ben got the script and I was like, who do you want me to play? You know, you want me to mm -hmm. play Phil? Do you want me to play Sonny? Do you want, you know, what do you, what do you want to do? And I, I think he, he went, you know, he was directing it. So he, he okay. was, that is a lot of work as you know. And, um, so he took the he he gave me the bigger acting job and mm -hmm. and, uh, and took the supporting role because he was he was had his hands so full as a director. It's also hard to direct yourself, you know. You really end up relying. I've done it, you know, with Clooney a, a couple times and that with Ben. It, it, it's uh, you really need to rely on uh, on your on the people you're performing with to kind of you know uh, tell you that you're you know to give you notes and say you know hey do less do more. Um, no, it's working. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's tough to direct yourself. I'm, I'm chatting with Sonny Vaccaro uh, for this show, Matt. And, Great. Um, and I saw the photos of you standing there on the set as him, with him. Um, wh what did you, what's your favorite Sonny Vaccaro story that you got? Well, I, I think Matt? he's such a lovely guy. I don't know how well you know him. I, I, he is just such a lovely guy. And uh, he just what was so clear is how much he cares about the players. 
how much he loves the game. Like he really loves, deeply loves the game, but really loves the players too. And, um, and that, and in this time, in this era, you know, because kind of this, after this whole deal was put together, the, the whole thing kind of descended kind of famously into acrimony and people were fired and they, and, you know, and left the company, you know, and, and what Sonny really said to me, uh, again and again, I think it was kind of the thing he really wanted me to understand was that this time, the, the time that this movie is about was, um, was really a joyful time for everybody, for all of them. He was like, we were all friends. Like they knew they were at this company that, you know, Nike was a weird company in the sense that, you know, they had these rules and they had the, you know, it's like uh, live off the land. You know, they had all these kind of crazy rules but that now seem commonplace in companies right they all have mission statements and all but like nike was it really was meaningful and that came from phil knight and and uh you know they were kind of they were outsiders and and they were they were rebels a little bit and and um you know and that was one of the fun things about looking back at 1984 i didn't remember that nike was the third place shoe like i of course remember the converse weapon and and larry and magic and all those commercials um but it was just right then that 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 this deal got put together and it just revolutionized everything the way ads were i mean everything it was just so huge and and these guys all like talking to sonny about it i, I mean he's justifiably really proud that he was a part of this and you know when we you know we didn't work with nike during the movie we didn't talk to them because we, we didn't want it to be you know, it's not a commercial for Nike and we didn't right. want that association. You know, I mean, it's, it's very kind to Nike, I would say overall. And like, so the last thing we wanted is to be accused of uh, doing a two hour commercial because that's not why we made the movie. But when, uh, when eventually Ben talked to Phil, funnily enough, Phil said the same thing after he said, we were all friends. And, and uh, you know, it's kind of like these guys are in their eighties now. And, and you wonder about that. And it really, Ben and I talked a lot after it was like, holding grudges right and 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 you know kind of you know rob strasser passed away after a few years after this all happened and Mm -hmm. he had left and gone to adidas and you know it had been this great betrayal to to phil and you know what i mean it's kind of then you get you get 30 years past it and you go oh man god those were good times and 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 we were friends and why you know it really made Ben and I, it it steered us into a conversation about letting go of some of those, those old uh, grudges. Well, I mean, again, it's just, uh, I I know you have kids, I have kids, my kids want to wear, you know, Jordans, Air Jordans, Jordan ones, they, cause it goes with what they wear. I mean, and, 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 and just seeing, I'm going to show this movie to them. You know, because they should know this is not just this is not a basketball movie. And obviously it's a story about relationships, just like all good movies are. But I mean, this is a seminal sports fashion statement like this is this created a whole new way of people dressing, living and obviously Jordan as well. And and again, I I, I don't denigrate when i say sports movie i hope you understand that as well because it's more than no 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 i I agree i agree but in that respect too a a great sign of a sports movie is the soliloquy the big moment um you know costner's had many of them in his career and you got one in this one i don't want to give it away too much but you got this is a bona fide real deal like want to hit through hit hit you through a wall type you know Pacino moments, yeah. every inches type thing here, man. And I'm wondering when you saw that in the script, did that hit you when you saw that in, in the script, Matt? Yeah, I mean, it did. I thought it was a beautiful moment. And and I, but I was like, well, it's got to, you know, if that doesn't work, then we are, we are sorely screwed if that thing doesn't work because right. that's the whole movie kind of leads up to that. And what it actually really depends on more than, more than my performance is is Michael Jordan, right? And people's own relationship with Michael Jordan, because it's the moment before, you know, just when this decision is made. That's this. It's this moment, and then he goes on to become to really have this meaning that we that we talk about, and that you know the, that to put the meaning in the shoe, right? And 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 those shoes are meaningful because of him, not because of, you know what I mean? It's 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 really this once in a century athlete who kind of who just uh 
captured our hearts really everybody's yeah. every so much bigger than the game you know yeah i'm I, you know from boston this was in the 80s i mean the celtics were everything up here and uh you know the celtics lakers that rivalry and that was what basketball was and our rivalry with philly with the 76ers and dr j like and this guy just came along and transcended every everybody became a michael jordan fan well everybody i guess you could you could also use the word wrecked it all. You know, I mean, you're a Celtic fan. I'm a Nick fan. You know, again, I, I showed my daughter, she's nine. I showed her a YouTube video of the top 100 moments of Michael. Somebody created a top 100 moments of Jordan's career. And truly one tenth of them was him ripping the Knicks heart and showing it to them pumping. And you could even include beating Ewing in that 84 national championship game. Oh as my God, well. yeah, that's like, right. I, the number of times he stood in my way as a fan. Um, yeah. And I still For love sure. him. That's what, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you can't hate him. There's no, there's no hating Jordan, you know? It's Howard White it turned out, turned out to be it was friends with Chris Tucker. It turned out very okay. fortuitously. So Chris got all these stories. Chris spent a lot of time with Howard and Howard told him one story that uh, Howard got really into cycling up in Portland, I guess. He, he was an avid uh, bicyclist and invited Jordan on a, on, you know, a 20 mile bike ride and, and Jordan demurred, turned him down. And like a year later, uh out of nowhere invited howard on a bike ride he said, let's go let's go for a bike it's a 20 25 miles where you know and he absolutely smoked him on this bike ride and it turned out in true mj fashion he had put a bike in the training facility and for a year had added that to his regimen because if he was going to go biking with his friend he was damn sure gonna beat him yeah. and like that you know, I heard stories about that, about ping pong, about, you know, he, yeah, you want to play ping pong? No, no, thanks. A year later. Hey, how about that ping pong game? And he's been taking lessons. Right. And it's just oh. it's he, he was an absolute killer, um, you know, and 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 it's what it's what made him it's what made him him. You know, I mean, it's just he was built differently. So, um, Matt, uh, before I let you go, it's uh, NCAA tournament time, big dance and all that. I know you're shooting a movie and you're promoting one at the same time. Did you fill out brackets? Do you fill out brackets? I didn't, you know, for I didn't do a bracket this year because I was so um, it's one of those things where I'm shoot, I'm in Boston right now and I'm shooting tonight. I get on a, a flight and sleep on the flight. Yeah land in la and i work because <laughs> i'm doing the press don't, tomorrow. don't worry you didn't miss anything your bracket would have been destroyed to smithereens like the i heard i mean all the number anyway. ones are out out for yeah. the first time since 1979 no number ones made it to the elite eight i mean my bracket is and i really haven't followed college basketball very much this year um and it was like throwing darts and my dart missed every single board it was awful well, it kind of always is i mean didn't, didn't warren buffett offer that thing about was it yeah. 10 years ago or something and like it perfect was, bracket yeah the no. perfect bracket and it was so genius because i because everybody signed up for it because they were like oh, you know because he, he offered like a billion dollars or something and yeah and if everybody i was, was out the whole country was out in the first round like much. nobody even made it yeah. <laughs> it's crazy so i can't imagine this year i'm sure everyone's redoing their brackets yeah my bracket was so bad matt if i was in that i would have to have paid warren buffett money that's how bad my bracket <laughs> was so don't don't well worry. i think you did because i think he got everybody on some email list by doing that like very cleverly there you um, have it. there you have it so what's next for you and uh and ben the the uh story about when uh brady uh created the tb12 system or something like that or like <laughs> first his first ever if avocado smoothie yeah <laughs> He's got our number. We'll do anything with Tom. Well, yeah. he's, reti he's retired. Uh, no, you know, we started this company, this studio, and uh, and so Air is our first movie, and I'm up here shooting a, the second one, and and we've got this uh, another sports movie, actually, uh, an incredible story about Anthony Robles, who's the uh, the college wrestler who was born with one leg, who um, who won the national title. I mean, that's another one where you know you know that you you know the ending, and it is just an un it's an amazing story um and so that's going into production soon um we're really excited about that one okay. so yeah we're, we're 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 on the other side of the desk now um trying to <laughs> trying to be a little movie studio well uh first foray amazing it really is terrific man it, it was so much fun you just dove straight into the pop culture of the 80s as well um fun story fun cast fun script fun it, the whole thing was fun literally like i said lasted five minutes matt so congrats on that that's that's how well that's how we felt about it i you know we we, we really started the company in large part to make these movies that aren't getting made the movies that we love right and like this is this is that type of movie it feels more like a 90s movie 
um, you know, it's about the writing and the acting and, and, um, and the direction. And it's not, you know, it's, uh, there's no, nobody in spandex with capes and, you know, no worlds exploding. It's just the good old fashioned story. So, so that's what we're going to try to do. Cause I do think people miss those movies. And I know I do. So we'll just, we're, we, our whole thing is we got to make good movies or else we go out of business. So that's, so that's a fun thing for us to focus on. Well, it just, see, it just feels like as long as you don't get, you know, all time goats demanding uh, all time goats portray his mother. Um, at least you were able to thread that needle, man. I mean, that's that's like a half court shot. You hit it, you nailed it. Thank God for Viola, man. I yeah, we, but believe me, I, honestly, we 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 really weren't going to do the movie if she said no. We just we would have just said, well, would you like to do it next year? And we'll wait. And right, if you ever want to do the movie, we're here. We, you know, we'll be standing by because. Um, you know, it meant it was that meaningful to him. And, and so it was that meaningful to the project. It was great. Congrats, Matt. Um, I hope to see you again soon. I hope we can do this again in person at some point. Congrats on the movie. And uh, let's chat again soon, brother. Thanks, Rich. Good to see you, man. You got it. That's Matt Damon right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Everybody go see Air April 5th in theaters. It's a fun ride. Enjoy it um, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.